This FizzCast is about power and velocity. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. The question is asking us what power must be supplied when you're pedalling your bicycle along level ground and on an angle of 5 degrees. Remembering what I know about power, power is equal to the rate of change of work with time and also power can be given by the force which acts on the object dotted with the velocity that the object is travelling at. The second form of the equation for power might be useful for us since we're travelling at a steady 18 kilometres per hour or in SI units 5 metres per second so we know that our velocity is constant and all we have to ascertain now is what's the force that's required to give us that velocity or to maintain that velocity. So what we'll do is we'll draw a diagram here and even though there are two cases, case A where I'm on horizontal ground so theta equals zero and case B where I have it ground at an angle of five degrees, what I'm going to do is set up the problem symbolically so we can solve for both cases. So let's start off with an incline here and I'm exaggerating the incline because that helps me when I put my forces on and here is my mass. The object mass is going to be that of my bike which is 14 kilograms plus the 68 kilograms of the rider. So that's the total mass of which is 82 kilograms and there are some forces which are going to be acting on that bike. We know that there's going to be a weight force acting downwards, mg. We know that there's going to be a normal force acting perpendicular to the ground which is n. We're also told that there is air resistance. So there's a drag force. Now we know that drag force is proportional to velocity. However, we're traveling at a constant velocity here. That means the drag force is going to be constant. So we've got a force that's acting in the opposite direction to my velocity. So if I'm traveling up the, up the slope, that's my velocity. My drag force is going to be acting opposite to that. And it has a magnitude of 30 newtons. And are there any other forces that are acting on my object? Well, importantly, if these were the only forces, then I think my bicycle and myself wouldn't be travelling up the hill. The net force would be down the hill. So there's another force which is pushing me up the hill. And in fact, that's going to have to be a little bit larger than the drag force because it has to balance the component of the weight force as well. So that weight force has a component which is down the slope. And so we care about uh, the sum of the forces um, along the slope's direction. The net force in that uh, direction, let's call this direction x, that net force has to be zero because we're traveling at a constant velocity. So this force here is really what we want to find out because this force is going to be the force that is supplied to push the bike along. Now what's the physical manifestation of that force? Well, that's actually the friction force. It's the force of friction between the tyres and the ground. Now, we have to be careful here because you might tend to think that the friction force would oppose velocity. It's certainly true for the kinetic force of friction. If you think about a block which isn't sliding on the ground here, that force of friction can be in any particular direction. If I push on this side, then my force of friction tries to oppose that motion, so the force of friction acts in the opposite direction. Equally, I could push from this side and my force of friction would act in the opposite direction. When you have a wheel which is turning, which is in contact with the road, if you're travelling along in a rolling motion so that the, the wheel is instantaneously in contact with the ground, but the ground is moving to the left at the same rate as the, at the bottom of the wheel is moving, then these two objects don't rub against each other. There's no sliding motion there, so it's my force of kinetic friction. If I'm slowing my car down, then my force is going to be acting in the opposite direction to my motion. If I'm speeding up, then the friction force must be acting in the direction of motion. So let's get to looking at the power. The power is now equal to the dot product of the force with respect to the velocity. The friction force is in the same direction as the velocity, so the dot product is just going to be the magnitude of the friction force multiplied by the magnitude of the velocity. And we know that the magnitude of that friction force is going to be equal to the drag force plus the weight force mg, and it's the, this angle here is theta, 
so it's going to be the opposite side, so it's mg sine theta. So in brackets is the magnitude of the friction force, and that is multiplied by the velocity, which we know is 5 meters per second. In the case of A, where theta is equal to 0, then the friction force just has to balance the drag force because the component of weight that goes down the slope is 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. That becomes the power because it becomes equal to the drag force multiplied by the velocity. And that's going to be equal to 30 newtons multiplied by 5 meters per second, which is 150 uh, joules per second, which is watts. In case B, when theta is equal to 5 degrees, to know that power is equal to the friction force uh, times the velocity, and the friction force is given by the drag force plus the component of weight, which is down the slope. So that's going to be um, uh, 82 kilograms times 9.8 times the sine of 5 degrees. And that whole thing is multiplied by 5 again for the velocity. This term here is uh, like 70.03. And so my power is going to be equal to 100 times 5, which is like 500 watts. So we've done the evaluation stage, so let's have a look at the assessing stage. Is this reasonable? Well, certainly as my angle changes, I'm expecting to have to exert more power. It's like trying to ride up a steeper and steeper slope. That makes sense. If the air resistance was larger, if the dra drag force was larger, then I'd expect, that's like riding into a headwind, I'd expect the power to be larger. That all seems to behave quite well. 